guys, welcome back to Empower In. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel, Empower In. So in this video, I wanted to go over a disease process that you guys were requesting a lot, and that is ALS. Now, as a nurse caring for patients with ALS, I'm so glad to see the recent events where there was so much awareness um, being brought to the disease with the Ice Bucket Challenge. After caring for many patients with this disease, it's really just so heartwarming to see the amount of support that they've been getting. So I hope that that support continues. As a nurse and as a nursing student, I really hope that I made this video easy to understand. And I hope that I included all of the information that you would need to properly care for your patient. So we love creating these videos for you. Um, my team and I love doing the research for them. And we really hope that this video enriches your life. So we're going to have another giveaway. We like giveaways. Um, so it's going to be a giveaway with a Whole Foods gift card for $25. So stay tuned until the end so you can find out how you can win that. So without any further ado, let's get started and let's go over ALS. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which you will see abbreviated as ALS, is a progressive neurodegenerative disease in which the motor neurons of the nervous system gradually degenerate and after some time they eventually die. Irrespective of background, ethnicity, and race, anyone can fall victim to this condition. ALS is also called Lou Gehrig's disease after the well-known baseball player who died from the disease. It is one of the most common neuromuscular diseases of today. Causes A motor neuron is a type of nerve cell which can be found in the spinal cord, brain, and brain stem. Motor neurons provide a connection between the voluntary muscles of the body and nervous system. For instance, during writing, the upper motor neurons, which are in the brain, send a message to the lower neurons, to the ones in the spinal cord, that you want to write. The lower motor neurons then send a message to the voluntary muscles, which are required for the act of writing, for example, arms, hands, and fingers. In case of ALS, these motor neurons get affected and they cannot function properly, and so the messages cannot be initiated or transferred to the muscles. This means that movement will not be supported in the muscles. This leads to weakness of the muscles in the body. They also get thinner and have fine twitches. As the condition reaches its later stages, more and more motor neurons are damaged and more voluntary muscles fail to function, due to which the affected individual becomes unable to move their limbs and body. Eventually, it leads to complete paralysis. Failure of the muscles in the diaphragm and the chest wall means that the person is no longer able to breathe voluntarily. Hence, the majority of ALS victims die due to respiratory failure in about three to five years after the appearance of the first signs and symptoms. In ALS, the affected individual loses the ability to move voluntary muscles, but they may still have control over the movements of the bladder, bowel, and eyes to some degree. Also, this medical condition does not affect the senses of touch, smell, hearing, and taste. Pathophysiology about 90 to 95% of all ALS cases occur randomly and no apparent associated risk factors has been discovered yet, but about 5 to 10% of these are inherited at birth from the parents. It is still unknown why the motor neurons degenerate in ALS, but the researchers have suggested certain possibilities which are as the following, gene mutation. Certain genetic mutations can result in inherited ALS. Another possibility is a chemical imbalance. Individuals affected by ALS happen to contain higher levels of glutamate around the nerve cells in the spinal fluid. Glutamate is a chemical messenger in the brain, but in its excess can be toxic to nerve cells. A disorganized immune response. Sometimes a person's immune system attacks its own normal cells, such as nerve cells, and it eventually kills the cells. Another suggestion is protein mishandling. Sometimes abnormal forms of mishandled proteins may accumulate in the nerve cells, which may result in death of those cells. Since 1980, studies have shown that ALS is not just a motor neuron disease. Researchers have found that microglia and astreocytes that were meant to protect the motor neurons against infection and help them stay healthy actually become traitors and damage the nerve cells by producing toxic substances and hence 
leading to ALS. Macrophages and several T cells also infiltrate the nervous system and actively release their cytokines. This can also lead to ALS. They also found that individuals affected by ALS, their oligodendrocytes, become unable to provide power to motor neurons. Hence, the neurons are drained of energy and are finally destroyed. Signs and Symptoms Early signs and symptoms of ALS are muscle weakness, affecting a leg or arm, or legs or arms, muscle atrophy and or obvious weakness, twitching cramps or stiffness in the affected areas, difficulty keeping good posture, slurred and nasal speech, trouble swallowing, and the advanced stages shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, and swallowing are also observed. Early signs and symptoms can differ based on the muscles affected first. Usually, it is the muscles of the arms and hands that make the ordinary activities like writing or buttoning a shirt difficult to perform. For other patients, it is the leg muscles that are affected first. They may feel awkward while walking and running. They may start to stumble or start tripping often. As the condition develops further, the muscles get weaker, affecting all sorts of functions, such as breathing, swallowing, and chewing. When muscles of the respiratory system are affected, the affected person needs permanent ventilator support in order to survive. When speech-related symptoms appear first, it is called bulbar onset ALS. But if the symptoms first appear in the arms or legs, it is known as limb onset ALS. Diagnosis. There is still no test for diagnosing ALS. The person is suspected to have ALS goes through several clinical examinations and diagnostic tests in order to exclude the chances of other neurological conditions that are similar to ALS. These tests may include the following, a muscle biopsy. The clinician may suggest this test to investigate the affected muscles in more detail. Electromyography or EMG, this test examines the electrical activity of the muscles during contraction and relaxation. A magnetic renaissance imaging or MRI may also be used. This technique helps detect or exclude chances of several conditions, for instance, a herniated disc in the neck, spinal cord tumors, or other diseases, having similar symptoms. A nerve conduction studies can also be done, which helps find out certain muscle diseases and nerve damages by measuring the ability of the nerves to send out impulses to the muscle in different parts of the body. Genetic testing can also be done. If ALS is suspected to be inherited, Genetic tests are used to further evaluate the condition. Also, a new technique called electrical impedance myography is being developed for diagnosing ALS, which will help identify the main changes in affected muscles. It will also predict the spread of ALS, which will help scientists find a treatment or cure for the condition. Treatment. There is no cure for ALS as of now. Patients are provided with, with treatments to slow down the development and prevent further complications. Scientists are, however, trying to develop a treatment and cure for ALS. Medications Relozole was approved for ALS by the FDA in 1995, and it is the only approved medication for the disease so far. Relozole works by decreasing the level of glutamate, which is a chemical messenger in the nervous system. This decrease can slow down the development of the disease in some patients. Although it is not a cure, it gives the patient some more time. Care and management. Nutritional support is very important. Together with a nutritionist, a diet plan can be given to the patient, one that contains all the essential nutrients that are easy to chew and swallow. At the advanced stages, the patient will require a feeding tube. Physical therapy is also important. Providing physical therapy to the patient can help release pain and enhance mobility for as long as possible. Low impact exercise can also be suggested for the patient for muscle strength, range of motion, and cardiovascular health. Occupational therapy. An occupational therapy can teach the patient with ALS to cope with the weakness of the hands and arms and ways to retain their independence as long as possible. Speech therapy. ALS affects the speech, causing nasal or slurred speech. Speech therapists can equip patients with adaptive techniques to help clear speech and easier communication. 
Psychological and social support can help the patients and their families deal with the challenges brought on by this condition, especially during the final stages. Breathing devices, like a mechanical ventilator, can also be used to help the patient with breathing and thus extend survival. Prognosis ALS is a fatal disease with a median survival time of three years after the appearance of the symptoms. Some patients with ALS survive longer than three years. Up to 20% of these patients survive five years or more, and about 10% of the patients live for about 10 years, and about 5% survive up to 20 years. There are cases in which the disease has stopped developing any further, and there is a small number of patients in which the symptoms of the disease have reversed. Hopefully, researchers will find a treatment and a cure very soon. Now, let's go over some NCLEX style questions so that you can gain further understanding. Remember, when you are in nursing school, it is really important to do as many questions as possible because even if you understand all of the content in your lecture and in this video, believe me, the questions are confusing. So be sure to look below in the description section after watching this video because we prepared a, a bunch more questions for you. Question number one. As the nurse makes her assessment with a 58-year-old client for degenerative disorders, which are clinical manifestations consistent with ALS? Select all that apply. A, polyphagia. B, fatigue. C, progressive muscle weakness. D, dysarthria. E, cramps. And F, twitching. This question is testing your ability to recognize some medical terms. Like always though, when approaching select all that apply questions, you have to approach each option one by one. Option A, polyphagia, means excessive hunger, and this is not a symptom with ALS. Option B, fatigue, is one of the first and most common signs and symptoms of ALS. It is similar to the next option, option C, progressive muscle weakness, making both of these answer options correct. Option D, dysarthria, means difficulty speaking or saying words, which, now that you know what the word means, you can definitely see that this is true. And option E, cramps, is also correct, as progressively limiting muscle strength and limited movement can cause cramps. The same is also true for the final answer option F, twitching, making the final correct answers B, C, D, E, and F. All of these are signs and symptoms of ALS. Question number two. As the nurse takes charge of the client with ALS, which of the following nursing diagnosis should be her utmost priority? A, potential for injury related to impaired physical mobility. B, impaired urinary elimination related to progressive loss of mobility. C, ineffective gas exchange related to aspirations secondary to absent gag and swallowing reflexes or D, impaired verbal communication related to altered clarity of speech. Oxygenation and air exchange is the priority for clients with ALS whose gag and swallowing reflexes have been affected by this condition, followed by impaired urinary elimination and the potential for injury, and impaired verbal communication, making the best answer option here, option C. Question number three. In giving discharge instructions to a client newly diagnosed with ALS, which of the following information is not consistent with the medication Riluzol? A. It promotes prolonged survival rates by clients with ALS by modestly slowing down the disease progression. B. It protects motor neurons from degeneration and death. C. Within five years of continued use, it is able to cure ALS by regeneration of motor neurons or D, if administered early in the course of the disease, this medication can help the client stay functional and independent longer. Many NCLEX style questions will be negatively written. Honestly, when nerves, sleeplessness, and information overload are factored in, these types of questions can be extremely hard to read. When I was in nursing school, I found it better to read with my lips every word in the question. Obviously, you can't read out loud, but to move your lips with every word will help you not miss questions like these. This helped me spot the negatively phrased questions. So what we are looking for here is an answer option that is not correct. Option A, it promotes prolonged survival rates in clients with ALS by modestly slowing disease progression is correct because it does slow the disease progression. Option B, 
it promotes the motor neurons from degeneration and death is also true. This is how it slows the progression. Option C, within five years of continued use, it is able to cure ALS by regeneration of motor neurons is not true. As of now, there is no cure for ALS. Hopefully this will change very soon. And finally, option D, if administered early in the course of the disease, this medication can help clients stay functional and independent is definitely true as it delays the progression of the disease, which will help maintain body function longer. So the only option here that is not correct is option C, because Reluzol does not cure ALS, but instead it prolongs survival and extends time that clients are in the earlier phases of the disease and helps them stay function and independent longer. All right guys, we really hope that you enjoyed that video. Hopefully we were able to explain all the concepts in a super easy way to understand. So also be sure to look below in the description section because we have a link to my website where you can get a lot more questions. Remember, questions, NCLEX style questions, are the way to go in nursing school. It's really one of the only ways to grasp the material. So as far as the giveaway, all you have to do to enter the giveaway is to subscribe to the channel and also post a comment. The, the comment can be pretty much anything you want as long as it's positive. If you want to post a positive quote, I might use that in my next motivational video. Or if you want to just say hi, you can do that. Or if you want to post a video request, feel free to do that as well. We really like the video request because it helps us know what you need and what you're looking for. So don't worry if somebody else posted the same request because the more we see it, the more we feel like we have to do a video on that topic. Again, it's going. the giveaway is going to be a gift card to Whole Foods. I'm obsessed with Whole Foods, as I'm sure many of you are. So yeah, so I hope that this uh, brightens up somebody's day. Also, um, to find out details on how to find out if you won, just look below in the description section. So guys, if you did like this video and you want to see more videos like it, please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. And anyways, that's it for now. So thank you so much for watching my channel. Thank you so much for watching the videos. I cannot wait to see you again in my next video. I'll talk to you soon. I love you guys so much. Bye.